is entitled Meaningless Worship and is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verses 9 through 16. This is Sunday School lesson for May the 18th, 2023 and my name is Tony Miller. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the 13th verse of the text and it reads as follows. Wherefore the Lord said for as much as this people draw near me with their mouths and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. Again, this is uh, this is a meaningless worship. My name is Tony Miller. Uh, I, I got a subtext here that I think that is important. That is, that life without a purpose is meaningless. I think that maybe as we move along this lesson, we'll kind of frame the subject we're learning today. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to know that God expects worship from the heart and understand that God is worthy to be praised and praise God from the heart. This is my YouTube channel. As you please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get my lessons automatically please like my lessons if i give you any value like my lessons share my lessons and leave me comments all of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of god with you Amen. so page that i've been sharing this year describes me as the share of the word of god it just gives you a snapshot of who i am and what's my process and and, and uh, procedures for sharing this word. My lessons are obviously not cookie cutter. They're not just like regurgitating the lesson text from the book. I allow the Holy Spirit, the true, true teacher, to guide and direct my path. And that's what I share with you each week. Amen. So this week, as we've been for some time, we've been, um, we've been uh, entertaining these uh, uh, messages from this prophet Isaiah. The prophet is, I share with you so many times, and I think it's important that I share with you this constantly because a, a prophet is a person regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of God, one who presents a message to, uh, uh, that God presents a message to, and the intent of that prophet give that message to God's people. And I just say, think so many people get that misplaced and, and, and twisted around and God is the one supplying the message and that message is the one who's giving that message from God to God's people. You cannot make yourself a prophet of God. God selects you. God gives you the message and your job is to give that message to the people, not to fabricate stuff out of your own brain. Amen. So a timeline, again, a timeline of uh, this people, God's chosen people, that beginning of Abraham, that they were, were, were God's chosen people. God made a promise to this Abraham, and, and then ultimately this people would go into, a water, uh, go into Egypt under Joseph. And after uh, this 400 years, uh, the, this people were under the hard task mastering of the of the, the pharaohs and of the Egyptian people that they, that time has expired and God has now appointed this one Moses who would lead this people out of this bondage and headed to that land that he promised to this one Abraham. And God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, the pillar of fire and cloud would lead this people through a Red Sea and to heading into a promised land, but ultimately because of their sin. Because they, 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 God would send the spies with Caleb and, and, and Joshua into this promised land and the other spies and they would come in and they would see what God would show them a land flowing with milk and honey, but they could not see it that way. They could not see it with the eyes of God. And they would ultimately because be judged by God and all those who were with them would ultimately die in that wilderness before they would make it into that promised land and only those Joshua and Caleb and, and those believers, true believers would make it into the promised land after the 40 years in the wilderness where God would, would again be 
with his people, the Shekinah glory. He would feed them with manna and quail every day. But again, they would they would finally make it into this 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 land, and God would say that you need to root out all the Canaanite people because if you don't, you will fall into the hands into the the, the wiles of the of the idol worshipers there in Canaan, and they would not listen to God, and they would ultimately fall into idolatry, and they would enter into a period of judges, and there they would continually fall sin and fall captive to the 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 the, the people, and fall captive to the people of Canaan, fall captive to the gods of Canaan, and God would there was sin, and 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 God would send them another judge, and sin, and God would send them another judge, and it would go through almost three hundred years of this process of sinning and God will send them another judge and then they would go to this period of kings where we are today and and God will send them uh these these prophets as well and and Isaiah the subject for a lesson but he'll also send them Hosea and Joel and Amos and Micah and Obadiah and Jonah and Nahum and, and Habakkuk and, and Zephaniah these would, would all be people that he would send them also and Ezekiel and all those that were sending Nezra and Nehemiah and he would send them all people prophets in order to speak to this people thus said the Lord what God's desire for his people amen and leading up to our lesson God will send them the same message over and over again like I share with you God gave this message to the people through those judges who ruled before the kings and now God send the same message to the people with their prophets to repent and now God has warned his people about the same thing for hundreds all the thousands of years and and these Hebrew people believe, believe that because they're the chosen people of God and that God is their king of kings and lord of lords the almighty God that 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 he has made these incredible promises to his people and that they believe that they will always be good with God even though it is sin and they know that God will constantly give them favor unfortunately that is not true in our lesson today almighty God will send them another amazing prophet and that will be Isaiah the Shakespeare of the Old Testament God warned these Hebrew people about these dumb idols idols made by the hands of man by blocks of wood and stone that that God would ultimately send them judgment but he would also send them hope amen the God chosen people became idol worshipers and God said that he was a jealous God he would have no other gods by uh, than him right but they changed the truth of God for a lie and they worship and serve the creature rather than the creator that again the idol is anything that places that replaces the one true and living God Jehovah Yahweh I don't know and and then the only power power that the idol has is the power of the man who made it is only the one is who carved it is not greater than the image itself let's move on and over his lifetime, the prophet Isaiah would prophesy about the judgment of God's peoples at the hands of the Assyrians, which I'll share with you in a second. And the judgment of God's people at the hands of Jerusalem, at the hand of Jerusalem of Judah, at the hands of the Babylonian. He would coming promise of the Messiah who will be that God with us, that Emmanuel. And he would talk about that new Jerusalem that I've been sharing as well as we've been talking about Isaiah over these last few weeks. Again, I, mean, I, I teach also from the the, uh, the International Sunday School lesson and the Standard lesson, and there we're both in Isaiah, and I'm sharing with you about all of these events that Isaiah will speak on. Amen. And this, we were here in this period of kings and prophets, as I share, and again that 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 Saul would be the first king, but David would be the king that God chose, right? And David would, because of his sin, would not be able to build the temple of God, but Solomon would do that. He would build this amazing opulent temple, which would be the centerpiece of Jewish life. And, it's, and Solomon, at the time of Solomon, that, that the prosperity was in the land, there no more wars, and they had, they had ceased from wars, and they would cease. And this man, the most wisest man in the world, one of the richest men that ever lived, and the problem that he would have, he would have 700 wives and 300 concubines, and they 
would have these idol gods that they would worship as well. And, and it would throw Solomon into this idol worship as well, what God had forbid. The smartest man in the world, the richest man in the world would still fall at the hands of the sin of the idols. And the northern tribes would also, would, and again, that this, that, that when Solomon would die, that he would have his, the, the kingdom divided. And it says to a kingdom, I share with you the start of time. And the two kingdoms, one by Rehoboam, who would be his son, and Jeroboam, who would be the one that he would mentor. And, and, and because of the sin of this people, that, 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 that Jeroboam would take the northern, uh, um, almost ten, uh, uh, nine and a half tribes, almost ten tribes, they would take them to the north, and, 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 and then they would be the northern kingdom where Israel would be there, and, and Syria would be their kingdom. But, but again, because of the battle with the, with, or the conflict with Rehoboam, Isaiah's, I mean, uh, uh, Solomon's son, that, that he could not go down to where the real trip, temple was, that he would have two golden calves in the northern, and ultimately God under Isaiah would tell this people that they need to turn to the wicked ways and ultimately they will be scattered at the hands of the Assyrians as God would judge his people. And in Judah, Isaiah would send this message to his people, a constant message that that's what I'm sharing with you. The message that Isaiah would have is people would ultimately go at the hands of, of God's, uh, uh, God would, would raise up this Babylon and they will send his people into captivity. But, 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 God has got a remnant that will be left and he will give them that restoration that he promised as well. Amen. Now, Isaiah was one of the greatest prophets of all time and Isaiah's visions had visions from God and was called by God, called by God to do his work, to bring the people to repentance, to save them from eventual destruction. And Isaiah came to the people with messages of judgment Temper with hope if you have a chance to turn back. And he ministered for over 60 years and he pleaded with the people to turn from their wicked ways back to the true and living God, a God who can forgive and restore them. But even God's great show of mercy and protection did not sway this chosen people back to worship of their gods. Their God. I'm sorry. Their God. Amen. And again, I share with you this Isaiah. He's a Shakespeare of the Bible, of the Old Testament. And in chapter 29, we're here, we began in chapter uh, not 29, verse 9. And, and, the, and again, this, uh, this message of meaningless worship. And, the, and again, that Isaiah opens up in his first eight verses of text. And I need to share with you that as we move into verse 9. And in verses 1 through 4, he, he talks about a, a coming distress upon on Israel, on Jerusalem. And, then, and, and that's, a, again, it's Judah. And then the Lord protects his people, but God will deliver an obedient, uh, uh, he will deliver this disobedient Jerusalem from its enemies. And I share with you that, 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 that this is, a, he has this, that, yeah, there's, 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 there's a judgment coming on you, but there is a blessing on the other side. And the nation of Judah, during this time when the nation's prosperity was incredible, and the people's pleasures were so selfish and it caused them to forget about God. They took advantage about their covenant relationship with him. They treated foreigners horribly. They were like privileged children in their relationships. Their behavior serves as a reminder that God is all well, God is always to be worshipped in spirit and in truth, not just by giving, going through the motions, and that's what he did, making irrelevant, making God irrelevant in their lives that they believe and they trusted in their money power and inflish and influence that was their god they had these seven festivals and they had sabbaths and they remembrance and they had food restrictions and they had feasts and sacrifices but they were sacrificing to other gods and they were following after the gods and the bells and the asherahs and they were doing all things contrary to what god had required for them they had this meaningless worship and that's what isaiah will speak on next slide I share with you verses one through four. And I wanted to give it to you in a message because I think that in the message Bible, I think it just gives you the clarity that we need from this first part of the text. The God speaking to his people through Isaiah, a judgment is coming. And he says, doom Ariel, Ariel's Jerusalem, right? Is, is Judah, 
the city where David set up camp, again, the city of David, Jerusalem. Let us, uh, let the years add up. Let the festivals run their cycle, those seven festivals I share with you. But I'm not letting up on Jerusalem. The, the moaning and the groaning will continue. And, and Jerusalem, to me, is a doom, right? Like David I will set up camp against you. Like David was a great warrior, right? He was one of the greatest warriors. And, and, I'll, and I'll set siege and I'll build towers and I'll bring siege engines and build siege ramps. And that's what the, the Babylonians did. They would set these ramps up on, on, on the wall of this temple and they would ride over the top, driven to the ground. You'll speak, you'll mumble words from the dirt and your voice from the ground like the muttering of a ghost. Your speech will whisper from the dust again. God is telling this Israel, this Judah, the Jerusalem, God's Jewish people, that he tell them that they are going to be judged. Amen. In verses five through eight, God is speaking to the people through Isaiah and he talks about a deliverance is still coming, but it will be your enemies who are beaten to dust. The mob of tyrants will be blown away like the chaff because of surprise as it was out of nowhere from a visit from the God of the angel of God's army with thunderclaps and earthquakes and, uh, and, and uh, ear splitting noise backed up by hurricanes and tornadoes and, and lightning. The mob of the enemies of war with Ariel who, who, who trouble and hassle and torment her, right? The uh, God's people would turn out to be a bad dream, a nightmare like a hungry man dreaming. He's eating steak and waking up hungry like a thirsty woman dreaming. She's drinking iced tea and wakes up thirsty. So will that mob the nation against Zion, against Israel, will wake up and find they haven't shot an arrow and haven't killed a single soul. God will deliver his people from their bondage, from the 70 years of captivity. Again, Isaiah speaking to his people about how they will ultimately be delivered. Amen. Let's move on. So now to our Sunday school lesson, let's move on to this text. Amen. So since our lesson is entitled Meaningless Worship Again is found in Isaiah chapter 29 verses 9 through 16. I mean, the use of new living as our backdrop. And verses 9 and 10. And I get Isaiah speaking to his people, and you are amazed and, and, and incredible, incredibly credulous, right? And he's telling these people that they're they are amazing people, but they're really just horrible as well. And you don't believe it, then go ahead and be blind. And he tells his people, you're stupid, but not from when you stagger, but and not from liquor are you staggering you staggering because of your your incredulous lifestyle your 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 lack of substance in your faith to god for the lord has poured out on you the spirit of a deep sleep because you have allowed all of your your uh arrogance and, and all of your prosperity to be that was driving you and he has closed the eyes of your prophets and visionaries and then what happens is God is constantly, and I shared you all of those prophets that he spoke of, and they're all saying the same thing over and over and over and again, that God would ultimately send spiritual blindness upon Jerusalem because ultimately they're, they're, they, were, they were so self-serving in their own worship of God. They had a whole practice of, of religion and they had a whole practice that God has set up. They had the law and they had the Sabbaths and they had the feast and harvest and all those, but they wanted to do it their own way. Again, the prophet speaks to this people. Amen. He says, you're blind, you're stupid and asleep, and you don't hear the words of my prophets. That's what God is saying to this people from this prophet Isaiah. Amen. Again, this meaningless worship in verses 11 and 12, for the future events uh, in this vision are like a sealed book to them. 
God is saying about this blindness is that people have. And, and when you give it to those who can read, they say, we can't read it because it's sealed. Again, God is speaking to them, but they're they're blind now. And, and when you give it to those who cannot read, they will say, we don't know how to read. Everybody has some excuses why they're not serving God. And God is challenging with this one prophet, Isaiah. Let's magnify him. Point in the next slide. Amen. next couple slides I mean and then the knowledge is needed to help his people was closed to them because of their continuous sin they would continuously sin and and it, and again that that even though they've heard the word but they've heard the prophecy they've heard what God would tell them what to do that God they heard it over and over again but what they heard was like a sealed book what Isaiah is saying to them that's like having knowledge but you can't access it because your eyes are blinded to all of what God is saying that in your condition in your arrogance you do not see God or the words that God is speaking to you amen that is meaningless worship that's what I mean and I mean this worship and I'm gonna have three cells that'll follow this one I'm sorry I just misspoke last time and so the Lord says these people say that they are mine and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, and their worship is of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by doing it over and over again, right? That's our, our, our key verse, right? Verse 14. Because of this, I will once again astound these hypocrites with amazing wonders. The wisdom will pass away. The intelligence of the intelligence will disappear. Again, like he said, that, that all of your information is like a sealed book, right? And sorrow awaits those who try to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their evil deeds in the dark. Dark. The Lord can't see us. He doesn't even know what's going on. That's what they think. And how many times do you listen to people say that, how can God, who's how could all this evil, and everything be going on in the world God must not be looking he must be on vacation he's not God is still in control he magnified these points here in the next three slides amen the Lord says because this nation approaches me only with their words and honors me only with their lip service but they remove their hearts from me and their reverence for me is a tradition that is learned by route with regard for me for well not without any regard for its meaning they, that God would tell them all of the remembrance had a had a purpose that it was a when they crossed over when they got the law when they were in the booth when they're in the wilderness when they got the manna and all these things were were all had a purpose but now they were doing them by repetition and just doing them over and over again without a meaningless purpose god had set them all he had set up sabbath he had set up the food he set up all these restrictions and then he set up their whole form of religion and sacrifices and all but they were doing it by route without regard to the meaning or purpose what they were doing they were doing it by lip service and not from the heart that's what god says next slide once again i will once again astound these hypocrites with amazing wonders the wisdom of the world is foolish just before god he catches the wise in their own secret trips that they think that they're doing something but God sees all hears all and is in all things again that's the problem that these people had they were just hypocrites lip service next slide but there is nothing covered that will not be revealed nor hidden that will not be known therefore Whatever you've spoken in the dark will be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear, in the inner rooms, will be proclaimed on the housetops. That you, there's no place to hide from God. And, and God is in all, everywhere, at the same time. Amen, the word of God.
and the people of God. Amen. This is verse 16 of our text, the last verse of our printed text. And then Isaiah 29, this meaningless worship that we find here. How foolish can you be? But God is the potter. He is certainly greater than you who are the clay. Should the created thing say to the one who made it, you didn't make me. Does the jar ever say to the potter, God who made me is stupid? The problem is we forget who God is. And what happened, this people forgot who God is and they decided to work, worship the created thing rather than the creator. Let's magnify this as we move on to close. Amen. So which is greater? Greater. The, the, crea the, the creator or the created thing. So I share with you that how can an idol be greater than the one who made the idol? I don't understand that whole concept that you're the, the, the artisan, right? Is the artisan or the, or the idol, that, 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 that one who had the ability to carve and, and, and to fashion a block of wood and stone is some image that one would worship. How is that block of wood or clay? How is a potter? How is the, the pottery greater than the potter, the one that made it? Again, God is greater than them all. And that's what he wanted them to understand. And, but they are now in their worship. They are worshiping themselves and not worshiping the one true and living God. Let's move on. As we move on to close this lesson. Amen. To share with you that has God then abandoned his people? Has he forsaken his people? Is his mercy gone forever? Does his promises fail forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his tender mercies? No. He reserved it for this remnant of people that would ultimately come out of this uh, judgment. That he will have some of the, the those who have uh, have put their hope in God, but they are the ones who would ultimately make their way through, just like those in the forty years that they're in the in the in the wilderness that 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 those who came before all died off, and and those who who were the younger after the forty years they would make it into the promised land. Therefore, we read in the text that in that day, that day of general slumber, the general ignorance. The general hypocrisy and general perversion, the general rebellion. In that day, the deaf shall, shall hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. And in that day, out of darkness, those people that remnant the, the meek shall also increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among them shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. That God is still having a blessing, even though that they've been in this captivity and they will go to a captivity, that they will go into a judgment. We see a gleam of sunshine breaking through the black cloud of, that oversees the earth. The Lord will appear on behalf of his people whom that they are, are not uh, here in mistakenly. They still are God's people. Let's move on to close out this lesson. Amen. So this meaningless worship. And I want to share with you this whole concept of meaningless worship. And I want to share with you a uh, an event that happened in my life. I traveled a lot. I have traveled a lot in my life. And, and I've traveled to Canada. No disrespect to the Canadian people. And just to tell you this message or this lesson or this, this event that happened to me that I went to this church once. And I went to this church. I was invited by some friends of mine. They're wealthy people. And they wanted me to go to their church with them as I was traveling in Canada. I lived there for almost a year. And, and there that, that I was there. And they said, let's go to this church. And I go to the church. And, 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 and it was a nice church, beautiful church. And, and there as I go in, and they would have service. And they had a guy. The church started on time, exactly on time. And the service would last exactly one hour. That it would be the 20 minutes of of, of, of this music that some guy was would had some guitar and he was playing some music and then he would continue to play this music but no interaction from the people 
and they would have the announcements as well and they would and then the preacher would preach for 30 minutes but here that this guitar that he was that he was he was playing that it felt like there was no praise and worship and i thought that's the purpose for this period of time that it was praise and worship but it wasn't it was just a guy playing some religious music and people were just there in this church and the church had about 250 people there in this church but I share with you another part of what was happening in this church that I sat in the third row, but nobody else sat in the first six rows of the church. That the 250 people were were in the rows in the back six row uh, behind the first six rows of the church, and the preacher was preaching up a storm. He was preaching up a storm, and no one said, no one gave a call and response. No one said, "Yeah, preacher." No one said, "Yes, said preacher." No one's lifting up hands and praise. No one's saying, oh yeah, thank you, Lord. Amen. None of that was happening in this church that they were all, 250 people were all sitting in their seats like, like statues listening to this man preach. And there was this worship that it just felt dry. And then, and then, and, and again, there was no praise. There was no worship. There was this, this messages he preaching. And, and, and again, the time is right on the hour that he finished up his message and he didn't even have an altar call. And then this, the service would be over and then the doors would open and there was a mad dash to the multi-purpose room where they would have coffee and donuts. No one went to the preacher to say, preacher, you did a good job. I love your message. I was the only one went there and said, you killed it, preacher. You did a great job, pastor. That was the end of the worship service. For me, it was meaningless worship. That why did they get dressed? Why did they get in their cars? Why did they drive down here? Why did they, they, they listen to a man preach? Why did they not agree with an amen with what his what God was speaking to them they were more concerned about going to the multi-purpose room where they would have the coffee and donuts and they would interact with each other and talk about what they're going to do for this week and what they're going to do that's what, what what was happening here in the same period of time with this with this people that that they were worshiping uh this the Jewish folks were worshiping God like that and uh, and again no disrespect to these people but they just for me it just felt Again, from my point of view, it was a meaningless event. An hour, I spent more time getting there than the time it took for this to occur. And then ultimately it was just the refreshments and the camaraderie afterwards. That again, I said, they had a form of godliness. They presented themselves as godly to the world that their friends see them get dressed and go to church. But it was all for show. There's no power behind their worship. That's what Isaiah is speaking about, this people. That's the problem with the message that he was sharing with this people. That's the kind of problems that these people were having. This, and that's what we have here in our lifetime as well. Let's move on. I think I have two more cells to close. Amen. The so-called saints of God in the day of judgment because of your lukewarm faith like i just shared with you because of your self-righteousness they were rich folks right because of your prosperity your status in the world just like these jewish believers god will abandon you will god abandon you will god forsake you will his mercy be gone forever from you will you be like that book that's closed will you not hear the words of the the preacher as he preached was, was it what he says to you be like a closed book will he be angry towards you will your prayers not be heard will they go to the ceiling and back down because they're fake insignificant and self-serving with no substance that's what the the prophet isaiah is speaking to us lukewarm christians and in that day in that day of your general slumber the general ignorance the general hypocrisy the general perversion the general rebellion in that day shall your deaf ears hear the words of the bible Will your eyes be blind out of the obscurity and out of darkness? The prophet Isaiah is challenging us to change our meaningless faith to real faith. Faith in the one true and living God in the spirit and his redeemer Jesus, not in yourself. Amen. Next slide.
presents message is the same message that our parents and our grandparents and our family, friends and members and loved ones and pastors and preachers and teachers. And, and these voices crying out in the wilderness are telling us now that you finish your school, you got a job, you got a wife and family and, and money and a house. The saying of God, you, you're back in the church, back in the real worship. You need to got back in your the God of your youth back in your life. You need God's power. Much prayer is much power. A little prayer is a little power. A lot of prayer is a lot of power. You need to find your way back to the one true and living God. You need Jesus in your life. That's what the prophet Isaiah is saying to you, saint of God. Next slide. Last slide to close. Amen. That all of the external stuff that we have in our life, all these things that drew these people away from God, that they thought they were cool with God. Because I went to church before my grandmother, right? I've been to church a few times. I've done all this stuff there. They had this fake faith. And now because out of their affluence and out of their education and, and all of this stuff, they now have to take faith, right? They now can go to a yoga and they got crystals and they got psychics and they got, and they got uh, self-help books and they got counseling and all these things it's all fake faith we're called to have meaningful worship that's what isaiah is trying to tell us today worship from the heart and i share with you that i think that god deserves that much from you saint of god so-called saint of god saint of god and i hope you agree and that is our sunday school lesson for this week my prayer is something you've learned this week, strengthen your faith. Get yourself real faith, faith from the heart. My prayer is something you've learned this week, strengthen your faith. The Lord provides all your needs. You learn something worthy of sharing. So in the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray and ask these things always. In his name we pray. Thanks so much for your time.